This voters in San Francisco approving some controversial measures on the ballot. Voters approved Proposition E, which allows police chases and public surveillance cameras with facial recognition technology and businesses closing due to the lack of foot traffic in the area. This is something the mayor has been trying to address. So joining us now is San Francisco Mayor London Breed. Good morning to you, Mayor. Good morning. So, Mayor, you scored uh, two major victories uh, with the measures you proposed here. We got Proposition F, which would require the drug screening for city welfare recipients, and Proposition E grants police the power to install public surveillance cameras, as we said, use of drones, facial recognition tech. So let's get reaction to those uh, big wins. Well, I'll, I'll just say, first of all, uh, Andre, the uh, legislation we got passed with Proposition E is not about uh, facial recognition technology, but it is about surveillance and our ability to put cameras in public spaces in some of the high crime areas of San Francisco mm -hmm. in order to help uh, deter and, if necessary, arrest those who are committing crimes on the streets of San Francisco. Mm -hmm. We want to be able to use drone technology, so uh, you talked about the high-speed chases. I mean, our goal is not to go backwards and uh, to create more harm as a result of pursuing suspects in San Francisco. We want the police to have the ability to do so when it is safe, and drones could be another tool to uh, avoid um, pursuits, especially in daytime when we know there's a lot of people out on the streets, the drones can be a tool to help us address that as well. So two great victories for public safety overall in 2023. Crime was down to the lowest it's been in yeah. 10 years, yeah. not including the global pandemic, and we want to keep up that momentum. Yeah, I want to get to that in a little bit, but, uh, but uh, first, uh, after uh, the approval of these propositions that you supported, uh, it really caught attention uh, uh, all over the country. The New York Times uh, had this headline here that I want to share with our viewers. Uh, it said, and it questioned, has San Francisco lost uh, its liberal soul? And another headline in the San Francisco Chronicle said, voters make it clear San Francisco could no longer be called a progressive city. Mayor, what are your thoughts on, on that and these headlines uh, in the New York yeah. Times and the headline in the, in, the, in the Chronicle as well? Well, I, I'm, I'm glad you asked because we can't continue to allow others to define us. We have not abandoned our progressive values. San Francisco has led the way around criminal justice reforms. In fact, we ban the box. We will hire people um, and provide them with second chances and opportunities. Uh, in fact, there are people who work for the city and work for me even who uh, have previously served time and have gotten their lives on the right path. Uh, we've done a lot of great work uh, around the things that we care about that are still very progressive around LGBTQ rights, the work we do with the African American community and, and others to continue to make sure that we show support, uh, we uplift communities. But we also know that when those lines are crossed, as much of the great work we do here in San Francisco, there has to be accountability. And that is what we're introducing into the equation. So we have not abandoned our progressive values in San Francisco. In fact, we are on track to complete our 272 reform measures under the U.S. Attorney's Office uh, Department of Justice reforms for our police department. And we're going to be announcing that in April uh, of this year when we expect to complete it. So I, I think that's just a false narrative out there. Again, trying to define who we are as a city. We have not abandoned our values. Yeah, there are some, you know, I've seen publications out there that are painting this very grim picture of our city. And I will point to what you said in your state of the city address. And you said the number of drug arrests, you know, uh, doubled in 2023. Uh, retail theft, car break-ins plummeted. The homicide rate is, uh, is, is uh, the arrest for homicides is higher than the national average right now. And, and as you said a moment ago, crime is at the lowest level it's been in 10 years. So with that in mind, Mayor, uh, if that's the case, why increase, why support the increase use of police technology if we have this reduction in crime happening uh, and, and part of this will again as you mentioned earlier will allow for more police chases if we have this reduction already well let me let me just say two things about that number one if, if, if people aren't feeling it 
um, you know, it's one thing to talk about the numbers, it's another thing how people feel. And, and that has to also catch up with the reality of what's going on. And our hope is by continuing to do this work, we will demonstrate our plan to ensure that San Francisco is safe and people can start to see and feel a difference. Number two, we had to go through a nine month Board of Supervisors process to get approval to use private surveillance technology in order to deal with some of the challenges that we have in the Tenderloin community. And in fact, 64 arrests, including two uh, homicide suspects, occurred as a result of our ability to use that technology. We need more tools. We need to be more smart about the tools, especially because when we look at the shortage of officers, technology can be a significant tool in helping us to combat crime as well. So I am, I am excited about what this will do, and we can't just rest on the fact that the numbers seem to be uh, extraordinary. Uh, we have to continue the work, and we have to make sure that people really start to feel uh, the difference in terms of public safety in San Francisco. Yeah, you know, the saying goes, perception is reality here, and if the perception of residents is that crime is up, then that is also um, psychologically an issue that that, that has to be addressed. I understand that. And, and uh, one more question about this topic. The police commission, we had a police commissioner on here uh, that, that oversees the police department who thinks that these new rules for the police department takes away a lot of the, the teeth for the commission. Uh, you know, they're normally the ones that would have to go through the process of approving uh, certain uses, uh, certain things within the police department. Uh, what do you say to the perception of this reduced teeth that the commission have right now? Well, first of all, the police commission is not an elected body, they're appointed body, and they have operated with a subset of advocates and really have left the public out of the decision-making process. So when a merchant in the Sunset or the Richmond is upset that police on the camera, video surveillance, got to the location as their store was being robbed, but the police did not pursue the suspect in the middle of the night um, because under our current laws, unless it's a violent felony, they can't, even if it's safe to do so. I mean, I think I would push back to say, if the police commission is changing policies, they need to go to the public. They need to do meetings, not just within their own group of people, but they need to make sure that they're going out to communities and we're being more proactive around trying to make sure that the public understands the trade-offs from the decisions that they make. And sadly, some of the decisions that they've made have been very much problematic for public safety. I understand. All right, let's move to Proposition F now, Mayor, uh, which will require welfare recipients to be drug tested and enter treatment treatment if they're using, uh, which could uh, have many, uh, have, could have their money taken away too, and it could mean they get evicted. Uh, what's the plan for those who fail drug testing and are evicted from housing? Wouldn't that push them back on the streets? And what's the plan for that? So Andre, another false um, statement about uh, Proposition F. Uh, to be clear, people who are advocates for this policy who pushed are in recovery themselves. People who have suffered from addiction on the streets of San Francisco who asked us to be more assertive and to do more to make sure people don't die on the streets of San Francisco. Number two, we have the ability to, even if we say that you're not in treatment, you won't get these benefits, we can, as a city, directly provide payment to landlords and also, in most cases, many of these people who receive general assistance are either in our permanent supportive housing units, they're in our shelter system. So there are ways that we could make sure that no one is evicted as a result of non-payment to them directly, but we will have in place a way to provide payment directly to ensure that whatever amount this money was covering for someone's housing, we have the ability under the law to do that. And another issue on homelessness I want to get on, speaking of combating the issue, which you know, you've been trying to do for years since you've been mayor. Uh, your competitor for mayor, District 11 Supervisor Asha Safai, wants to resurrect the Homework Bound program that uh, has helped about 13,000 people that's been reported uh, in the Chronicle uh, return to their loved ones outside of the Bay Area, uh, but it hasn't really been active more recently in your administration. Why is that and do you support bringing that program back to full strength? Yeah. Well, again, here's another false 
information that's being provided to the public in a way to gain political points and to bring attention to a candidate for mayor. The fact is, since I've been mayor, since 2018, we have helped over 15,000 people exit homelessness, and that includes implementation of the Homeward Bound program, which definitely slowed down during the pandemic, but picked up after last year when we made a number of changes in order to make it a lot easier to implement this program. Mm -hmm. We can't force people to accept Homeward Bound as an opportunity to uh, return from whatever place they came from to their family member, their friends. The other challenge that we've run into is having someone on the receiving end. So we've been doing everything we can, and, and so far uh, within the past uh, couple of months or so, we've been able to help over 300 people through the Homeward Bound program, and we'll continue to do that because Homeward Bound has a success rate of 90% mostly of the people that we end up reuniting with family members don't return to San Francisco. Mm -hmm. So it's already being done. This is another wasted you know, policy uh, when we already have what we need to implement the program, and we are doing it. So. So your, your um, rebuttal is it's being done right now. So what your rebuttal is it is being done uh, as opposed to what you know has been yeah, said publicly and, by others. And, and let's just be clear, you know, there are a lot of people who are going to run for mayor and they're going to try to get their news attention and try and announce things. And most of the things that all of these people are announcing are things that I have already done or I am doing. Um, it's really unfortunate. We need to focus on the business of the city and, and, and not the attention that goes into policies that don't have any meat and won't be successful uh, based on how they're trying to propose it. In fact, this might add some more bureaucracy to make it more difficult, mm -hmm. and we don't have time to waste. All right. Well, I have a feeling that, um, you know, the mayor's race is going to pick up and things like this will happen uh, some more. So, Mayor Breed, we'll, we'll talk to you. Uh, Definitely. Um, you know, about these, about these issues as, as they come up. And we appreciate your time this morning and uh, sharing your thoughts with us and uh, on those two propositions that you proposed that you scored a victory on. So, we appreciate it. Thank you, Andre.